I have a confession to make. I am a huge fan of Tesla. I mean, I actually, I own a little bit of their stock even, but I had never driven one. I was really excited when Hertz announced that they would start offering Teslas at many of their locations around the US in 2021. The company purchased a whopping 100,000 Tesla Model 3s to add to its fleet of vehicles. On our February trip to Orlando, I was excited because I had found a Tesla at MCO's rental fleet. It was only $20 more total than my normal small crossover that I get for the family, so now was the time. But was the Tesla I reserved actually there when we arrived in Orlando? And how was the experience of picking up the car from Hertz? Driving it around, charging it in Orlando? Well, let's take a closer look at my experience renting a Tesla from Hertz in Orlando, Florida. Before you can drive off with a brand new Model 3, you need to rent it first. Right now, Hertz is still in the process of rolling out these vehicles at many of its locations. My rental from Hertz in Orlando was $289.19 for five days after taxes, which is about the price of most larger sedans or mid-size SUVs. If you're renting a Tesla, make sure to pay for it with a credit card that offers primary rental car insurance. This will protect you if you damage your rental. In short, it pays for all damages so you don't need to file a claim with your car insurance provider. I paid with my United Club card, as I do for all of my rental cars. When we arrived in Orlando, we immediately got off our flight and headed to the car rental area. I'm a Hertz Gold Rewards President Circle member, so I went right to the lot and didn't find my name on the Hertz Gold board. So I had to go to the counter. Now this could have been a combination of things, but the counter attendant that helped me out seemed to be fairly new. He didn't quite know what to do with the Teslas, but he did check me in and wasn't sure that I rented the Tesla on purpose, so he forgot to give me the key. Well, you may or may not be familiar with the fact that Teslas don't have keys. Instead, they have key cards. Just a note, to unlock and lock the doors of the car, you hold the card over the camera on the car's B pillar, and well, there you go. But now being a President Circles member, I'm used to not getting keys since they are in the vehicles. Now the Teslas in Orlando did not have them in the cars. I walked to the reserved lot and a white Tesla Model 3 was sitting there for me. It was spotlessly clean and sealed with a Hertz Gold Standard clean sticker, a practice that the rental car company has become more familiar with post-pandemic. Uh, it was on a base Model 3, the standard range model with rear wheel drive, and the vehicle had about 75% charge when I picked it up. Now I spent the next hour or so driving the Tesla around Orlando, eventually making it to our hotel in Disney Springs. Now, if you've never driven an electric car, which I hadn't, you might be a little shocked. Yeah, okay, that pun was intended. The first time you drive a rental Tesla. One big benefit of electric cars is that there's no lag when you press on the accelerator. It was instant power. The results of this is not the plaid or the ludicrous mode, but it is a respectable 5.3 seconds from 0 to 60. And let me tell you, it's... It's kind of addictive. It throws you back when you're merging onto the highway and you'll find yourself wanting to accelerate or zoom zoom, as my little man said, from every single stoplight. One thing I was not ready for was a regenerative braking. Once you let off the accelerator, the car slows down really quickly and sends energy back to the batteries. This makes one pedal driving possible. However, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you are new to electric vehicles like I was. Likewise, the car won't creep forward when you stop. Now this was a nice feature and well, I enjoyed that. But it does take a little bit of getting used to from more traditional driving experiences. Another thing first time electric vehicle drivers like myself might be curious about is charging. It's not nearly as annoying as it sounds. Tesla has its own network of chargers dubbed superchargers that are scattered throughout the country. There are over 30,000 superchargers located throughout the world you'll find them along highways and in cities. These chargers are super fast. According to Inside EV's testing, a 2021 Model 3 can charge to 50% in just 16 minutes and 80% in 32 minutes. The Model 3 Standard Range Plus has an EPA rated 267 mile range. We ended up having to use the charge points at Disney parking lots, which are not exactly fast. Supercharging was free for Hertz Rentals through March 1st, 2022. After that, all charging expenses will be billed to the credit card you booked the car with. 
charging prices fluctuate and vary based on the speed of the superchargers you use. You'll also find Tesla destination chargers, which charge slower at many hotels and parking lots. These are ideal for overnight charging. Hertz asked that customers return Teslas with at least 10% charge. However, Hertz confirmed to us that the company is not charging customers who return cars with low batteries at this time. The Model 3 has storage, yes, I'll give it that, but it's not the same as the Model S, and to be honest, that's what I was expecting. Its trunk is a standard size for a sedan. It can easily fit two medium suitcases, or in our case, a suitcase and a stroller. And there is the second trunk, dubbed the frunk, in the front underneath the hood. It's big enough to fit one carry-on, and it does come in handy if you have things you need to easily access. The front and back seats are spacious and feel similar to most other sedans I've driven. Now it does of course have enough room for a car seat, and all Teslas have vegan leather interiors that are comfortable and feel pretty high quality. So much that you might actually forget that it isn't real leather. One of the coolest parts of the Tesla Model 3 is the infotainment system. Everything lives on a 15 inch touchscreen at the front of the car, navigation, the speedometer, climate control settings. It's just as responsive as an iPad. The interface does take a few minutes to get used to since everything is in it. And to be honest, it does take a little bit of, well, getting used to that your speedometer is not right in front of you. Starting with the basics, the built-in GPS is good, but going to Disney, sometimes it didn't take us to the right entrance for parking, so we had to make sure where we were going. The car tells you how much battery you have at the end of your drive and as discussed, lets you know where you'll find the superchargers along your route. Even with the quirky features aside, the Tesla infotainment screen is, well, the best in the market, and it does work exactly like you expect it to work, and the responsiveness is unmatched. Autopilot is amazing, but it's not full self-driving. These days, all new Teslas come with Tesla Autopilot included, and Hertz Teslas are no different. When you press down twice on the shifter, the car engages Autopilot and begins driving itself, to an extent. Standard Tesla Autopilot will keep the Model 3 in its lane and adjust cruise control to adapt to the car in front of it. You can set a maximum speed and how closely that you'd like to follow. You do have to keep your hands on the wheel when using Autopilot. The car will also notify you if it doesn't sense your hands on the steering wheel. And to be honest, eh, sometimes even when they are on the steering wheel, it will still tell you. That said, Hertz rentals do not include full self-driving. So the car cannot follow GPS and fully drive itself from point A to point B. While it would be nice to have full self-driving, standard Autopilot is great for road trips and long jaunts on the highway. I used the feature a handful of times on the highway in Orlando and didn't have any issue. It makes highway driving a lot less stressful as you don't need to adjust your position in a lane or adjust for curves. And it does help with stop and go traffic, bottom line. Overall, my experience renting a Tesla from Hertz was good. The process picking it up was similar to renting any other reserved car from Hertz. And overall, I really did enjoy my time with the Model 3. It's zippy, fun to drive, and the technology is second to none. Beyond that, the car is comfortable and has an all right amount of storage. Rain's anxiety though is a real thing, so I'm not quite sure this is the family rental car for everyone. If you've wanted to drive a Tesla but haven't had the chance to, consider renting one on your next trip. It was a great way to scratch the Tesla itch. Thanks everybody, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a huge thumbs up, smash that like button if that's what you're into. It does help spread my videos to other people so they can be helped as well. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when I release new content. Thanks everybody, and we'll see you real soon.